Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are enjoying the holiday season. You know, it's Christmas time, everyone's off of school or everyone's getting time off work. So I hope you guys are all enjoying it. As always, Juan back here again, really excited to once again sit down to talk about more sports creative content. So as you guys know, I ended up upgrading my camera to the Sony a7S III. However, I know that this camera is out of a lot of people's budgets, so this video isn't actually about this camera in particular. At the same time, all the questions after that a7S III video I made a little while ago were actually asking me about what the best beginner or budget camera is for someone who's looking to get into sports videography. So if you wanna start being a sports videographer or sports content creator, and you're looking for a camera that's decently priced but also is perfect for this line of work, then this is the video for you. Before we continue, as always, I wanna ask you guys if you guys could subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed my content lately. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna see some of my work. I would really appreciate the support as I really wanna continue making these videos. Like I said, it's the holiday season. I wanna put more time into this, so your support is greatly appreciated. So in this video, we're just gonna be talking about what I think is the best budget or beginner camera for someone who wants to get started in sports videography. Now, in my opinion, the best budget camera on the market right now, without a doubt, is the Sony a6400. Now, I'll preface this by saying this is actually the a6300. This was the first camera I got about three and a half years ago when I first started shooting video. Now, the a6400 is the newer model of the a6300. The specs, the features are relatively the same for the most part, minus a few things here and there. However, I'm gonna speak about my experiences with this camera first, and then I'm gonna talk about the differences between this and the a6400, and then kind of leave it up to you guys to decide which camera is best. But like I said, they're very, very similar there's minor details that make them a little different so in essence I feel like this is a very good starting point for me to explain why that camera is the best available right now so ripping the band-aid right off the bat the a6400 costs around 1300 Canadian dollars yes I'm Canadian so that's around 900 USD in comparison that's the exact same price I got the a6300 about three and a half years ago now for a camera that is just under $1,500 which I know seems a lot but when you think about it for $1,300, you're getting a lot in a really tiny package. What are you getting in this camera, you're asking? Well, this thing can shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second, and it can shoot both 60 and 120 frames in 1080p HD video. So this camera's 4K footage is actually downsampled 6K, which Sony says produces a better image, and I'm not gonna lie, every time I use the 4K quality on this camera, it blows my mind again and again that the image is so great coming from such a little body. And guys, if you're shooting sports, if you want to become a sports videographer, being able to shoot high frame rates, like I've said in the past, is so important. And the fact that this shoots not just 60, but 120 frames per second in 1080p HD is such a value for a camera under $1,500 for a camera that can essentially fit in your pocket. It's such a great deal. And it's one of my, if not my favorite feature from this camera. Now this camera can also hold its own in photography, it has a 24.2 megapixel sensor, it's great for photos. However, I haven't really used it, that's not the purpose as to why I got the camera, so I'm not gonna really talk about the picture quality here. The a6300 also has a tilt up screen, which is good if you're kind of shooting low angles or if you wanna not strain your neck a little bit, but there's really nothing to write home about here. I've always wished that this had to flip out screen and it's kind of disappointing I never did, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not like it's just stuck on the back and doesn't have any functionality whatsoever. Now that we're past the specs, why would I recommend this as a beginner camera? First off, this is the best bang for your buck camera on the market. There's no arguing it. Uh, for the price you're getting at it, 1300 Canadian, 900 US, there are very few cameras that have the capabilities of this little guy for that price point. And like I said, this was my camera for three and a half years before I got my A7, and I haven't looked back. This thing has held its own in weddings, corporate shoots, professional sports. All of my Ryerson videos were shot on this. The price that I got this for and the value it's brought back to me, it's paid itself off infinitely more than I ever would have thought it would. One of the reasons I like this so much, it's a crop sensor. Now I know people have if ands or buts about crop sensors, uh, low light capabilities, le lens choices, what, what have you. But the size that this camera brings is great. You can fit this in your pocket sometimes, you can fit this in your bag, you can hide it really easily. It's basically the same size as my iPhone 8. Like it's not much longer, it, it's a bit thicker, but when you're comparing the thickness to newer cameras on the market, it, it's a small camera and it's really, really convenient sometimes. Especially when you're shooting sports and you're on the go, you want a lighter package. You don't want to be weighed down by your camera. And this was perfect. It weighed almost nothing and I never really got tired shooting on it. And when you want to balance this on the gimbal, it's so easy because of the weight. It's not heavy at all. Even if you put a longer lens on it, 
you can still balance it because there's not enough weight on the body for a gimbal to not be able to balance this. But again, that weight shooting sports with a camera this small, it's just, it, it, it was a match made in heaven for the longest time. And I couldn't complain more about never really being weighed down by this camera. Like I said previously, the 4K image out of this guy, the quality, it was my favorite thing to shoot interviews with. Now, I haven't really talked about any of that on my channel so far, but I love shooting features and interviews. And I love shooting interview subjects with this camera. Just the 4K quality and the, how sharp, crisp, and natural the image looked was fantastic and was easily the first thing that made me fall in love with this thing. Like I stressed before, that slow motion video, that 6120 frames is a must. Most, if not all, my sports footage is on 120 frames per second right out of this camera. Now, that may be a bad thing for some people, but I love shooting 120 frames per second. I find it gives me the most flexibility in my post-production process. But like I said, all done with this camera. And the 60 frames per second here is great too. Didn't use it as often when shooting sports, but if I ever did find myself shooting for a client that wasn't sports related, say a restaurant or a wedding, which I've done both with this camera, the 60 frames per second was great. Getting that slow motion at 40% still looks fantastic. Another feature that I really enjoy is how the a6300 allows you to shoot in different picture profiles such as S-Log and Cine4. Cine4 was the one I used for the majority of the time, but you do have the capability to shoot S-Log on this camera, which essentially gives you more dynamic range and more room to play with when you're editing your color in post. This is actually a really big deal for, again, under $1,300, being able to shoot flat images is great when it comes to post-production, and it really helped me understand how to color grade before I moved on to a camera that can actually use something like S-Log at 10-bit, like the A7S III can. On the body itself, there are two custom buttons for you to assign whatever feature you want to them, and two custom modes on the dial so you can essentially preset any mode you want on the camera to be switched at your convenience. Mode 1 for me was always 4K24 and mode 2 was always 120 at 1080p so I could switch between slow motion shooting and real time footage whenever I decided I needed to. Now I talked about the specs, I talked about the features that I fell in love with, but what about its use for me now? Now that I've upgraded to a much better camera, where does this sit for me and why do I still have it? This was my main shooter before I got my a7S III. The camera did an unbelievable job and at the end of the day, it got me to where I am now as a videographer. Even though I won't get the same amount of use it did before, it's still gonna be incredibly handy for me. I've already used it to shoot the behind the scenes of a promo that I shot recently with a client and it's gonna be my B camera for any interviews I do in the future. Now I might also try running a two camera setup for shooting live sports, which would basically be me shooting handheld or in a cage with my a7S III, and then having this mounted, balanced, ready to go on a gimbal at a moment's notice. However, I haven't gone to try that because COVID-19 has kind of shut sports down here in Canada for the time being, but it's another possible usage that I could get from this camera in the future. Now, between the a6300 and the a6400, there are a few differences, but I personally think that you can pick between either two of these cameras and be just fine. Now, one thing the a6400 has over this camera right here is that it actually has a flip up screen. Now, it's not necessarily the flip out screen that you see on the a7S III or on other cameras, but it is an upgrade on the tilt screen whatsoever, especially if you're into YouTube videos, especially if you're into vlogging, you can just flip up this screen and you're good to go. The autofocus is also improved on the a6400, although that's nothing to shame this camera, as the autofocus has always been great for me. Sony cameras just really have a track record of having really great autofocus systems, and it never let me down. However, it is improved on the a6400. The a6400 also has updated processors in it, which may help when it comes to overheating, but I personally never really had overheating issues with the a6300 unless I was shooting 4K footage for a really, really long time, but it wasn't really something I ever encountered. Apart from those updates and features, it's essentially a carbon copy of the a6300, just with those features that make it a little bit more new and give it a bit more punch in comparison to this counterpart. Now, like I said, features and specs, it's a little bit better on the one end, but the way you should choose between these two cameras really comes to availability and opportunity. The a6300 is a little harder to find because it is an older camera, but you can still find it lying around in Kijiji. I took a look and you can find it anywhere from eight to a thousand dollars Canadian. So when you're going to American, you could probably find this for seven to $800 to use. And that's a really, really great deal for what you're getting with this camera. For the a6400, you could probably find a very similar price used, but like I said, brand new, it runs around 1300 Canadian or 900 US, the exact same price in which I got my a6300 around three years ago. 
with a similar cost if you want to have those upgrades, if you want the flip up screen, if you want the improved autofocus, you can't go wrong. It's essentially the same camera with a few upgrades and I would still recommend that any day of the week. And with those similar price points when brand new, the a6400 is arguably the best current camera on the market for something like this, especially with those upgraded features from the a6300. But like I said, if you can find it used and you wanna save a couple bucks, you're not really losing much by getting the a6300. So to conclude this video with everything I talked about before, I strongly believe and I will continue to believe that the Sony a6300 or a6400 are the best bang for your buck cameras on the market right now for sports creatives, sports videographers. Even if you wanna get into photography, this is a great camera to start off with, especially if you're not playing with a lot of money. 4K video, 120 frames per second video, 60 frames per second, picture profiles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any feature you wanna talk about this camera, it's a no brainer for me. It was easily the best investment as a videographer and one of the biggest things that allowed me to get where I am today. Let me know in the comments, do you guys have one of these cameras already? Are you guys considering it now after watching this video? Have you guys been thinking about it? Let me know, I would love to hear what you guys think of these little cameras. I think they're great. I think they're excellent for the value you're getting them at. And it is the camera I would recommend to anybody just starting off in sports videography. Now, if you guys are interested, I think a budget gear video series was in the plans for me. I just wanna know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Lenses, accessories, I would love to talk about a few items that I've bought that have saved me a couple bucks, but have really allowed me to improve as a videographer. Finally, you guys know what to do. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. And if you haven't yet, please, please subscribe. I'm really happy with the way we're growing. I'm really aiming for bigger and better things on YouTube. I really want to expand on the platform. So a subscribe would really help me a ton. That does it for now, guys. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.